Welcome to Box Free with Stephanie. Today I want to show you how to make some basic foods with simple ingredients from scratch. And I hope you discover cooking box free is fast and delicious. So let's cook together. Today we're going to make rhubarb jelly because it is rhubarb season and um, jelly is just a really easy thing to make. So I've already cut up eight cups. I'm doubling my recipe, let me just say that. I've cut up eight cups of rhubarb and I've got these giant, gigantic stalks from um, this neighbor down the road. And mine are like the size of a finger that I have out in my little itty bitty garden. Um, and so these things are just humongous. So anyway, I've already cut a bunch because with so much, I'm just making a ton of rhubarb. This is what I made yesterday, that little batch. And that was a double batch, I think also. Um, and this is just a really easy recipe. Oh, I'm going to put this in my pan just so I can have my um, measuring thing. This is just the using jello. So um, it's really easy. And I don't know, I've kind of decided that I think it's actually quite healthy because most of your substance is the rhubarb. And then you're adding sugar and gelatin. You are adding food coloring with the um, gelatin. But I have made this with unflavored gelatin and um, it's pretty much fine, really. And then there's no food coloring. Um, it's a little bit of a healthier alternative, you could say. And I'm just gonna do this last stock. Um, but the thing about it I've noticed for me is when I don't have the flavored jello in there, it's nice and gelatinous or whatever, like, you know, coagulated kind of thicker like jelly. But my mom always made rhubarb sauce for our waffles. And so when I eat the jello jelly without the flavor or without the color, um, I just really feel like I'm eating rhubarb sauce instead of like a jelly, which is totally a mental thing for me. Like, so if you don't want the food dye, and you don't want the extra flavoring, just use unflavored gelatin. And it's the same exact recipe. Um, I have not added more sugar when I'm doing unflavored because I think this is plenty sweet enough. Um, but if you find that you need more sugar, go ahead and add it. But I didn't think I needed to. Okay, so I had eight cups in here. Now I have um, like five. So that's 13. I'm only supposed to have 12, but I kind of go over just to use up my rhubarb I had. Um, and I don't really worry about it because like I said, this is so sweet and a little extra rhubarb will just give me more product and not make it any less sweet. I mean, one cup of rhubarb, it's just not going to matter. My God, this is like super full. Did I do a double batch yesterday? I don't even remember. Okay, so to your rhubarb, you're going to add, so I'm doubling everything. So I have half a cup of water because for six cups, you do a quarter cup. So for 12 cups, I'm doing half a cup and that's all the water you would need. And then I'm doing three cups of sugar per batch. So this is three cups, which whew, that is a lot of sugar, but I mean, that's what jelly is. So I just figure when you're making your own rhubarb jelly, it's just got to be healthier than like buying jelly at the store because it's mostly rhubarb and you could, I'm sure you could cut back on sugar and it would be, you know, pretty decent. Okay. That's another three cups. Um, the thing with rhubarb is, you know, it is crazy tart. So, um, you do really have to add a lot of sugar to it. And for the last couple of years, I've kind of been in an anti rhubarb kick because I just feel like you have to add so much sugar to it and it makes me crazy. But, um, and I've had this pretty much on high because I'm trying to get a boil. What you have to do, I'll finish my story in a second. What you have to do is get your sugar to basically warm up and then melt and it becomes much wetter that can let it become like a, um, a boil. So you are actually bringing this to a boil. And of course, when you only have three cups of sugar and six cups of rhubarb, 
It's not so difficult to stir, but this is just a little bit crazy. But I will get through it because I did a double batch yesterday, I think. Um, anyway, so my daughter came home like two weeks ago with this gigantic rhubarb, and she said that the neighbor had it just like free on the grass, and so we made jelly out of it. And um, I have decided, like, I'm just going to make as much as I can right now because um, I, I would use this on top of my pancakes and waffles and stuff like that. Um, I don't really eat a whole lot of jelly. I mean, I like PB&Js and stuff, but, um, oh, man. And maybe I would eat more PB&Js now with this jelly. I don't know. I guess I hadn't thought about that. Um, trying to get this thing stirred so that I can get my sugar all mixed up because I don't want my sugar to just be like dry on the bottom of my pan because I don't want it to like burn or something. I've never had that happen. But normally I don't have these gigantic, look at these things, gigantic chunks of rhubarb. Um, so we are just going to wait a minute. This is going to take a while. So I'm just going to come back because this isn't very exciting. <laughs> and I don't have that much to talk about rhubarb. Actually, I probably do, but I'm going to come back in a few minutes once I get this kind of boiling and show you that liquid substance that you're supposed to be going for. So hang on a second. Okay, I want to show you what it looks like now. It's been maybe four, five minutes, and now it's looking a little soupier. My, jet, my sugar is getting a little bit runnier like that. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. That's why you don't have to add a lot of um, water because you end up creating quite a bit of soup when the, the um, sugar warms up and becomes a little more liquefied. So now, with all of this getting melty like this, now I don't have any more white in here. It's just that dull gray sugar color. Um, so now I have to wait for this to boil. And um, I boil it until it all becomes very, very soft. So let me show you really quickly. This is my jelly I made, I don't know, five days ago with my unflavored gelatin, and this is my cherry. So you can see the difference in color. It's quite remarkable, you know. I mean, this is just plain rhubarb color, and this has the red dye from the jello. So um, that's what it would look like if you did unflavored gelatin. So I'm going to put it on pause again and come back when my rhubarb is all kind of cooked. Oh, I should say that I've had this on high and I'm going to let it kind of come to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it to low and let it simmer and just kind of slowly boil a, a slow boil. If there's such a thing, um, there is, um, and just let it cook until it gets really soft. And then I'll show you what I do next. So I'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes. I am back and it's been probably 15 minutes or so and my rhubarb is very soft. Even the big chunks when I kind of push them against the, the um, pan, they definitely like squish right down to nothing. Um, but if you see, if you can tell in here, I have a bunch of white stuff and that was basically because my, my boiling was too rapid at the beginning. This got really hot and so it was boiling really, really hard for like two or three minutes. And then that creates kind of all this white foamy stuff from the sugar boiling so fast. And it's not really that big of a deal, but um, once I blend and add my jello, if it doesn't go away, I'm going to try to skim all of that and put it into one jar so that that's kind of my whitish jar because these are all really nice and red because any white stuff I had, I skimmed off and um, it makes a difference. So, and it was really just from, I think, boiling too fast, too hard. So if you keep it as a, a you know, a nice boil to begin with and then turn it down right away and then simmer it slowly, um, you shouldn't get a whole lot of white stuff on there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my stick blender because I personally don't want, especially with this one, this rhubarb, I don't want these huge pieces in my jello jelly. Um, it just seems like, nothing I want, but if you want that, just you would add your gelatin now, but I'm going to make mine nice and smooth. So here we go. And you could stop right now and kind of have some smooth and some texture, but for jelly, for me, I want it really smooth. So 
I'm going to keep going until almost all my chunks are gone. The other thing I've discovered is if I have a lot of chunks, then when I add my gelatin, it's like I almost can't tell if it's a chunk of rhubarb or a chunk of gelatin that's like balled up and I don't want that in my jelly either. So, um, so anyway, I guess the point is if you see a little white blob after you add your gelatin, it could just be a piece of rhubarb or it could be gelatin. But, okay, so, ooh, I almost went outside. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And, um, oh, my thing is still too hot. Okay. I'm going to take this off the heat right away because see how it's bubbling and it's got those white spots. Let me unplug this, see if I can move this out of my way here. Okay, so now I have pretty smooth, I mean I still have a chunk and you know like whatever, that's fine. Um, and now if my hot plate wasn't so hot, I would have kept it on the stove while I add my gelatin but it was just boiling too much and now I don't have a whole lot of white so I'm choosing to put in cherry flavored jello um, a lot of people I think like strawberry which I did make some of that and it's just a tad paler as far as the deep red so if color is important whatever but it's really the taste I personally just like the taste of the cherry with the rhubarb Okay, and then you don't want to just dump all this in. Um, I think you want to go really nice and slow and try to make sure that all of your gelatin is immediately whisked in. And then you really shouldn't get any clumps. Because the very first time I did it, I just kind of dumped the whole thing in and it was okay, but not as perfect as doing it this way. So, I've been making a lot of rhubarb jelly lately. So, um, so normally for six cups, you would just do one three ounce package, I think it is. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm doubling, so I'm doing two packages. And I had lime jello that I kind of wanted to try, <laughs> but I figured the tart rhubarb and the tart lime might not be good, but you could experiment with whatever you like. Just do any kind of flavored jello or just the unflavored gelatin. That works also. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I can get this white stuff worked in. Sometimes I can, and then sometimes it just doesn't seem worth it, and I just put it into one of my jars. Normally I have a couple little jars, um, my little half pints or something, but I've made so much jelly <laughs> that I'm kind of out of them. So I just have my pints and my wide mouth, and these supposedly are the types of jars you can put in the freezer. These with the narrower neck, you're not really supposed to put in the freezer. Something about how this has the space for expansion and this does not, so you don't want it to crack and break. So you know, all my white stuff is kind of gone. I've just kind of worked it in. So hopefully that means I won't have any white, white um, streaks or pieces, parts in my jars. Okay, that's it. Now I just ladle into my um, jars and of course you know you just wash your jars before you use them but you don't have to like have them hot the way you do when you're actually canning something in like a water bath or a pressure cooker pressure canner okay and then that got a little bit messy but I'm just going to wipe off all my lids beforehand and you know I have one of those like those things that you set on here and then you just have a huge mouth to pour. Boy, I should have gotten that days ago. I could have been using it for all this. You know, it's, it's like a funnel. You stick it in and then it's really nice and wide. But I think I'm going to run out of jars again. I have more downstairs, but I um, thought that I'd have enough. But I might just put it like in a little one of my kind of um, leftover bowls and then we would just eat that one first. And then I do leave the little headspace, even though I'm not going to process these. And what I do is basically put the lid on and then you seal it tight and you let it sit on the counter like overnight or six hours until it's like completely cool. And you might hear the pop and that means it has kind of sealed, but I would never trust this on my countertop um, or my cupboard or whatever. 
So I say keep this in the fridge or the freezer um, because it's not officially, what do you say that? Um, it's not like food safety processed, you know, canned, I guess. Oh my gosh, I have enough for a whole nother jar. Okay, well, I'm just gonna use my other little bowls. Um, so this is okay in the fridge, but you don't wanna take a chance with it and not store it in the fridge, in my opinion. So let me get out this big one. And so I will basically just use this jelly first. It would be kind of weird to have it in a jar like this. Maybe this will be my like syrup container. And I will use that for waffles and things like that before I use my jars. But they make really nice gifts, like a little half pint or a pint. I haven't done in a huge quart jar because to me that just feels like I don't want to reach for jelly in a huge, deep quart jar. That does not appeal to me. Um, but if it does to you, then you could put it in there too. So then when you're done, you just kind of wipe off. You're trying to get the top seal to be clean because if you were just put your lid on, it would never seal anyway. Um, and even though this isn't like, you know, canning safe and hold it in your cupboard, uh, we're going to keep it in the fridge. I still like to try to get them to seal. I just feel a little bit better about it. Okay, so now all these are clean. This will just set aside. All right, and these are, whoopsie, all ready to go. And you want to tighten them pretty tight. I mean, like for, you know, canning. You don't really want to just like lightly tighten them on there. You want it to really kind of push down and seal. Even though all these are used, they're, they still have some of that rubber um, um, thickness in the, in the lid. So um, you definitely want them to be tight. And these are like really hot. Okay, so there we go. This is a, um, I think a two and a half cups it says. So that's how much you get when you double your batch. So look at me, if anybody wants to come have pancakes, man, I got it going on here. I got all this rhubarb jelly <laughs> that I'm gonna use on pancakes and my toast. Okay, there you go, homemade rhubarb jelly. So thank you very much for watching Box Free with Stephanie. I hope you like the show. I hope you make rhubarb jelly while the rhubarb is still out and fresh. And I hope you love it. Um, thanks for watching, I appreciate your time. I'll see you guys next time, bye.